Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. As you can see, I have been playing with inks. I am having fun doing this ink rainbow challenge. Um, I was tagged by Sarah at Fountain Pen Insanity. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you for listing my name um, with my friend Donna from South Shore Paper. That was special. Um, this has just been so fun. I did a long video and I did uh, a lot of talking and I decided I wasn't really happy with how I did the swatching. So I redid my swatches in a much more casual manner. As you can see, I just took a Q-tip and I just kind of did the little back and forth motion. And I'm actually loving how the colors are looking here much more than my original plan. So let's go ahead and do one more paper together. I think that would be probably more beneficial to everybody's time. Um, but I do like how these colors look and it's kind of funny how I think our preferences seem to show up on these kinds of tags or challenges. This here is 68 GSM Tomoe River paper and it's on white rather than cream. This is the Taroko design paper. Um, I believe it's the original Tomoe River paper. Not 100% sure on that. And then this is the new paper I'm trying out. Is this B7 Bulky. I don't know if that's part of the name. That's how it was listed at Danica 58. This is the A5. This is supposed to be a super fountain pen friendly paper and I'm experimenting with it. And this is the colors there. This is more of a cream or off-white. And then this is not Cosmo Air Light, my typical go-to, but this is the Regalia paper, which has been a current favorite of mine. So um, I will try to do this in a somewhat quick manner, but let's see, let's just see what we like the best. And as I go through these, I'll let you know what I am using and you can compare on the others. This is the Conklin Dusty Rose, quite lovely. And I'm gonna put on gloves, hang on. Let's see if I have a little bit more success with keeping clean wearing these. Inevitably, I will still manage to get ink all over the place, but you know what, it's a great hobby. And if I'm gonna have a mess on my hands, it might as well be from playing with inks. This is Vinta Laguna. This is the St. John's um, 1605. This is a nice red. So my, my color specifications for this rainbow challenge are pink and red. This one goes on in such a beautiful, deep, what I would call a blood red almost. Um, and it dries a little more on the brown side, but I have had great luck with this red ink, especially in my Bennu Briolette and Broad Nib. The next color for the yellow slash orange category is Noodler's Southwest Sunset, formerly called Apache Sunset. And this is maybe not the wettest of inks, not, not bad, but I love the shading quality of this ink so much and it's such a fun, vibrant color for summertime. You know, just that yellow, orange, bright, think of all the summer activities. I'm really liking how it's looking here. It's got that little bit of edge Seems like a little more dimension is shown on the Tomoe River. A little more matte here. That would be one thing I, I think between these two is that the B7 has a little more of a matte feel, a little bit more of an absorbent feel to it. The next color is green. And I chose Jade Noir by Monte Verde. This is a ink that I have had so much success with in a variety of pens. I'm really happy with this and I probably have about a third of a bottle 
left. And I'm debating, you know, will I, will I get more when it's done? Or will I venture out and get a different green ink? I do love the green inks. But this is such a good flowing ink. At least it has been my experience with my pens. And this does, uh, this next one tends to dry with a red sheen. This is by Pure Pens and it's called Kum Idval. It's a Welsh name for, I believe it's a lake or a, a valley type region. I think the Kum means lake. Um, I did some research on it a while back, but it's been a little bit. So this is my teal entry. I have a little gnat flying around. That's annoying. Okay, and then my blue, that's the next color in the color rainbow specifications, at least the one that I'm following. And I am so partial to Ackerman deep water blue. It's such a serene blue. It's a steady, reliable color that works with all of my pens, specifically for my Cavecos and I was having some trouble with them and came across that ink and decided to try it because I really wanted my Cavecos to work well. And they do work with this. On the B7 paper, I'm getting a little more, could you say, a slight green leaning to that or maybe maybe just a little less vibrant, maybe a little more black or gray quality is showing through. It seems a little more pure here. It'll be interesting to see what it does here on the regalia. And then next, purple is Diatramentus, Alexander Hamilton. This ink was recommended to me by Marcy over at Marcy Me. She is a great place, um, her channel is a great place to go for ink reviews, pen reviews, paper reviews, and she's very thorough and just has such a wide selection of things to watch. And if you want to know about a pen, I bet you Marcy has it. Okay, and then, so that was the purple. These seem similar. As it dries, it does get a gold sheen. Let's see what happens here. And then for my fuchsia or magenta category, I chose Yamabudo's, uh, Iroshizuku's Yamabudo. And I believe that means wild yam. So I am not familiar with wild yams. This is, I just got a phone call from my daughter. I'll have to call her right back. This is um, a very vibrant, bright color. And I think this is such a nice color for summertime too. I really need to put it in one of my pens because it's not a color I really want to use during the winter. And then for a brown, I chose to use my current favorite ink, the Tachiya Golden Wheat, or Suchi. This is such a magnificent color. It has such great shading when I write with it. Let me just get a little bit more, and it looks so pretty. It's got such a nice golden reflection here. It's seeming to me just off, right off the bat, that this is coming across much more lightly, but it's pretty light here. It's the darkest on the B7. And then another pap uh, paper, another ink that I'm wild about is this Winter Spice. And it is really a good color for winter, I think, because of the deep, rich tones. It just, I don't know, makes you think of a starlit night or something and cold air and... I don't know. Winter Spice is a great name for it. I'm hoping I'm getting some of this sheen. What really clinched the deal for me when I saw this swatched, uh, I think on Marcy's channel actually, 
was the blue shimmer. So there's a green sheen, a blue shimmer, and a brown base to it. And it's just resonates with my soul. I love it so much. So go away, Nat. You may hear the lawnmower outside. We're having great 70s weather here in the Midwest. And so I think with me going in and out, I've invited in some bugs. Let me let this dry and we'll come back and talk about these. Okay, so I would love to know if you can distinguish a difference on these. Let me try to line these up. On these different swatches, different papers. And what is your preference? I'm actually really liking all of these and I'm seeing shimmer and sheen coming through with all of those, those three papers there. Maybe a little less sheen here, but it's still showing. The most sheen on the Coombe Id wall is probably on the Tomoe River. And that's, I guess, what Tomoe River paper is really so well known for is how well it accentuates the ink qualities. But aren't these colors just gorgeous? This is the B7, a new possible contender. I really do like Regalia. There's just such a limit on the sizes and um, I think that Danica on her Etsy shop said that more sizes were coming in the B7. And then of course there's just the basic uh, Tomoe River, the new uh, blend of that or the new make of that. And then this here is the um, Regalia. You can buy these notebooks on Etsy. I think they're on Van Ness as well. Probably other sites. That's what I'm familiar with. If you're interested in trying out the regalia. I think these two do the best job with the Southwest Sunset. It's a little bit matte here. I don't know if I mentioned that. It just seems a little more dry, a little more absorbent. But some of these inks that have this really good quality of sheen and shimmer are really shown off with that paper. So originally, with my much longer video, I did tag some pen people, and I will just briefly run through those with you. I wanna um, mention them because several of them were significant in my early fountain pen journey, Chris Signs. You probably all know her. Tons of information on her channel. Super friendly, non-pretentious lady. So fun to watch. I love Kristen's style. Um, she just gets to the point with her ink evaluations and I like how she edits her comparisons with the cards. She did not like the red, um, let's see, Rouge Hematite. And we both agree that that was too stark, but I wondered if she would like this red. Holy Fire Scribble. Um, is maybe a little bit newer to YouTube, and I've really enjoyed watching her, swatching videos, and hearing her conversation as she evaluates the inks. Hemingway Jones was also mentioned by Donna at South Shore Paper, but he is definitely worth a visit. Very knowledgeable with inks and pens, and I love his background, his live streams, um, and his... Uh, kind of professional style videos that are like documentaries that are super interesting, especially the Winston Churchill one. Uh, Hannah, I don't know how to pronounce that, if it's Sonder Wander or Sonder Wonder, but Hannah does great collaging videos and she recently inherited a bunch of fountain pens, so that's a fun video to watch, um, vintage ones. And then Lisa Plans and Journals is kind of new to me. I came across her recently, and Donna had also mentioned her, but I like her shorts because I feel like um, I get a lot of information in a brief time. And sometimes I think that's a great way to glean some wisdom in this hobby. 
Marcy Me is a fan of purple. She started out talking about purples when I first discovered her on Instagram or YouTube. This one has a gold sheen to it. She's into greens now, but she did start out when I watched her talking about purples. Um, and then Heldon Wrights is Marley. Um, she's recently come over and she was from the Netherlands. She's married here and living in Georgia. And she does great videos that are just very natural, casual. You're in the living room with her and you're journaling or learning about pens. And I, I really like that just everyday feel. Um, and similarly, carry from pens and teas. You're just in their space and they're showing you pens and, and inks and talking about them. And they both know so much. I just marvel, especially Heldon writes. Oh my gosh, she just knows everything about pens, it seems to me. And then Leanne likes. I like her style. She has a little more of a, um, I don't want to say staged, but, but a beautiful presentation when she does her videos. And I think we've all fallen in love with the little stainless steel condiment cup that she uses <laughs> to swatch her inks there it's just so much fun to watch that so anyway that is my ink rainbow and these are some tags of people you might like to check out of course just a sampling of the many interesting wonderful conversational and uh, fun to know people out there so thank you everybody that post thank you sarah for tagging me and thank you sarah the other sarah at ginger Peachy for starting this ink rainbow tag. Hope you'll join along and post your videos. Take care. See y'all soon.